Vaping, also known as e-cigarettes. What started out as a way to help smokers has become a trend and grows into a huge community. In Malaysia, the vape industry has grown in the past three years. We've seen hundreds of shops popping up selling vape-related items and flavors. Like shisha, people are leaning towards vaping as it has assorted flavors compared to cigarettes. But what is vape all about? Why is it so popular among the young adults and why some people are against it? Today, we are going to take a look into vaping in the Klang Valley. Vape has been around for more than a decade. The first person to invent and patent this technology was Mr. Herbert A. Gilbert. He proposed a smokeless non-tobacco device back in 1963 and was approached by several companies interested in manufacturing it. But it was never commercialized and disappeared from the public record after 1967. In the year 2000, a Chinese pharmacist by the name of Hon Lik is widely credited for the invention of the first generation e-cigarette device. It vaporized a pressured jet of liquid containing nicotine diluted in propylene glycol solution and delivers nicotine directly into the bloodstream via the lungs. His company exported this product in 2005 to 2006 before receiving its first international patent in 2007. Hi, my name is Gobi, one of the owners of Vintage Vape Cafe Pucho. Today, we get an expert on the matter to tell us more about vape. Vaping has been very famous in Malaysia for the past four to five years. And basically, I have been vaping for the past one and a half years. And vaping scene in Malaysia has been so popular that a lot of smokers are changing into vaping. And what is vaping about? And how we can help in terms of health basis or in also in terms of saving. If you ask any smokers, they want something alternative to release their addictive to smoking. So basically, you're looking at something that you can give uh, the same method of smoking whatsoever, but you don't want to have the addictiveness of smoking or the 4,000 chemicals inside a cigarette. So moving that into vaping has uh, evolving a lot of people inside, personally myself, because why? I find there's only four to five chemicals inside here, and it's all food-grade chemicals inside vape products, uh, which is the liquids, which I'm saying, yeah. Cigarette price is hiking up crazy in Malaysia, uh, any parts of the world, tobacco price is going up so extensively. And some people will be able to afford it to buy, some people will not be able to afford it to buy. But most of them who, regardless they afford to buy or non-afford to buy, they want to have something cheaper, something that they can use longer in a period, and something which is convenient. And the worst part of smoking, I would say, which is the order, the bad order which comes up from your mouth, and the disturbance that you're giving uh, people's out there, second-hand smokers, you have effect for them too, apart from yourself. So when I move into vaping, I have done my own research and so on, where the second-hand smokers, you won't have some, anything like that, any effects for them. And you don't have a bad order coming out from your mouth when you vape and you smoke and so on. So this is where it encourages me to move towards something uh, new technology based or normal terminology, they call it as e-cigarettes. For vapors, you call that as vaping, yeah. Well, I mean, anything new comes up in the market, regardless it's vape or medicine or food, any fusion, anything comes out in the market. Uh, initially, you'll have the sensitivity of whether it's good, whether it's, it's nice to have it, whether it's harmful, what are the pros and cons of having it, what are the pros and cons of smoking it or vaping it, what do you call it as. Uh, so this, all these things was in my mind 
be, even before moving towards because this kind of products or e-cigarettes, you're talking about technology-based technology based burning products where you produce vapors uh, externally. So when you evolve for technology-based products, you don't want to have any side effects or anything to do with electronic base uh, hurting yourself, hurting your body or your system inside. So what happened was I do a lot of research, external research apart from Malaysia, many parts of the country, uh, for example of uh, Public Health England or CDC, Central Disease uh, Research. So all these things when I read, uh, done my own personal research, to, to inform you further, there has been no conclude uh, research or journal saying that vape is one of the best products or vape is the next thing. No, nothing. Research is still going on. So what I found that uh, from the recent researches which has been made, vape product or vaporizers, you call it, what comes out after you, you press the button and release, which is the vape, is 95% much more safer compared to cigarettes. Well, vape scene in Malaysia, I would say nothing less than seven to eight years back. It all started in 2002, 2003 whereby those days, I mean, you have this term called underground basis. That means you sell in your car booth or you personally bring from overseas, you sell to your friends, you sell to certain point of people that who emailed, who knows you very well and they know you that you're selling it. It's not viable to people. People don't know that there's something called vape. There's something called alternative cigarette. So merging one by one, uh, you be able to see that certain shopping complex, they have a small booth and be selling this thing called e-cigarette. It's like a pen kind of thing, small little thing that you know hold and cigarette and then you can use it for 10 times and then you dispose it. So that emerging technology base emerges. So evolving from there, from 2002, 2003, you have something called mechanical mod. There's two kind of version of it. One is mechanical mod and one is the regulated mod, which means mechanical mod, you just put a battery inside and you just fire. There is no regulatory, there's no system inside to control whatever whatsoever. So it just fires. This is where a lot of people tend to tell that you have much blasting or it's very dangerous and so on. So vape scene started merging towards until now. You have so many advanced technology based in vape products. And it's all been so much advanced that every single thing that you'll be able to control, and it's not as harmful or dangerous that what you see those days back again there. And now, expanding further, those days is very hard to get vape or juices, what you see here behind, or vape products, or people who are vaping outside, you can't see them. Now you have a lot of shops, a lot of places that you go. Your leverage of going to a vape shop, obtaining a flavor or a juice, they call the e-juice, or a mod product or accessories, or you're having a problem. Every single place that you go, you tend to see a vape shop. Or someone going by the roadside, you'll be able to see them vaping. And for example, as Puchong, any part of Puchong you go, you'll be able to see a vape shop. So you have the the viability to go to any place and purchase your vape or your products. Well, back then, uh, you, you have few different types where you can classify. The government base, you can classify. You can classify consumer base. You can classify from the acknowledgement of people, the, the, the awareness of people for vape products. Those days, I mean, emerging of 2002, 2003, people know that something alternative to cigarettes, traditional cigarettes, but they don't know what is it. People, many people have not seen it. They just heard it. Uh, they don't see it online and stuff like that. But now people have seen it, they're looking at it. A lot of people know it, a lot of people are frustrated because they see a lot of vapor coming out from the product. Some irresponsible individuals are extensively using it in a non-responsible manner in areas like that. So the awareness from the government, they're looking through the regulation parts of it. Those days the government didn't look out. I mean, they, they have been the, the lookout point for the government. But now it's been so extensive that the government has already been in terms and talking terms with a lot of shop owners, brewers, in bringing a proper uh, rules and regulations for it. Okay, public knowledge, quantity and quality, it all depends. For example, it falls on us, the shop owners. The shop owners has to have the responsibility because, for an example, as a consumer, uh, looking through social media nowadays, yes, you'll be able to go and find out information about vape, the plus and minus of vape, where to get and where to obtain. But this all comes in bulk basis if you go online. Having so many shops here, I mean shop owners, these are the guys that who brings in products, who brings in accessories, who brings in mods, who brings in tanks and liquids. So they have to advise customers, they have the responsibility whereby I need to bring in a quality product. I don't want to bring in a uh, very low cost, uh, low quality kind of a product. So this falls all on the shop owners. 
where they need to advise customers because customers if you ask me they don't know anything you'll be able to find some research on the internet some pros and cons model types and so on but whether it's good whether it's uh, viable to be able to use for long duration all these things falls on the shop owners because they know they have tested it they've used it so the pros and cons has to be advised from the shop owners looking through the vape industry or vaping it's supposed to supposedly to be to smokers hardcore smokers or smokers who are looking at something they do, they want to move out from smoking they want to move out from the order they want to move out from the risk of health in smoking so this is actually meant for them smokers but eventually what happens now is uh, it has become as a trend we have a variety of customers coming in we have customers who are chain smokers who want to stop we have customers who vape and also smoke we have customers who are men and female male and female gender basis customers we have young customers we have old customers we have customers of youngsters who comes in and says that actually i don't i don't smoke but i just want to vape you know it's been like my friend is vaping you know i just want to have that it's been a trend basis whereby uh, you have liquids which contains nicotine and some liquids don't do not have nicotine so customers who who don't smoke so we offer them uh, flavors which doesn't has nicotine that means it only has flavors inside of it yeah so coming back to question we have a variety of customers coming in for that but apparently there's a lot of responsibility taken there's three types of responsibility one responsibility from the brewers second from the resellers or the shop owners third is from the customers so explaining further brewers when they brew a product a liquid they need to know what kind of liquid they are using what kind of raw materials they are using what's their method they are using are you doing in a pharmacy are you doing in a house are you doing in your backyard all these things plays a big role inside of it so you, when you're producing a your product the quality of the product speaks for itself so when you provide this we actually inhaling and exhaling the product so this particular product if you're done in a very low bad quality what happens you get side effect for your body in terms of consumers so brewers need to have the uh, responsibility in having that in mind that we are providing this to consumers and this actually affects the health in many different types of ways so that's their responsibility when it comes to shop owners for example like myself and so on we have to test the flavors first we have to see whether the flavor is good we have to communicate with the brewers how is the product been made what's your process of the product been made how is your packaging style very important first preference or first look of your product how is it been style how is it been bottled what kind of bottling are you using whether it's been exposed where well, how is it been exposed how to use the product all these things the resellers need to know the shop owners need to know we advise the consumers because consumers or the customers they don't know anything they come to the shop they said uh, i want this flavor i want this flavor i want this flavor base you have all kind of fruit flavors you have all kind of cream flavors so this kind of flavors we need to advise uh, our customers in terms of how to vape how to use it how to refill inside how how often you have to change your cotton or your coil inside of your tank and then moving towards the consumers or the customers they need to have a very bigger responsibility in terms of where to vape you don't want customers or consumers to go and vape in a shopping complex or in gym you have complaint like this running in malaysia vaping in a mama shop very extensively you know blowing on people's face the vape for you for, for example vapers we know that it's a vape but for laymen for normal people for auntie or uncle who's not a uh, smoker or a vapor they will think that it's a smoke so responsibility from the consumer's point of view for example consumers or customers who come to us they need to know how to vape where to vape uh, which locations have to vape i mean i'm not saying that is very discreet for vaping no but what you want to have in your mindset is that you don't want to disturb somebody else or the passer by or the one who's sitting in a shop behind you to have the vape totally to their face so for example certain people that you have noticed outside there they tend to have a lot of vaporizers coming out from their products here some of them you have normal basic vape you know just vape something like a smoke kind of thing but what they need to have in mind is that they need to have the responsibility not to vape in areas that shouldn't smoke or shouldn't vape for example in mall or in stadiums or in shopping complex inside even the tgv or pavilion or you know a cinema we have a lot of complaints i mean personally we we educate a lot of customers here coming over don't vape in this kind of areas you know tend to think about people for a normal man for a no- normal uncle or auntie who's not even smoking or vaping what their perception about vapors is that is a smoke you know what's coming out is a smoke it's affecting me and i'm a second hand uh, smoker or vapor from your vaporizer but what we know of vapors it doesn't give any side effects 
for the research now, it doesn't give any side effects. So this has to be there in the mindset of people when they vape outside or you don't vape in a restaurant which is closed off. Go out, vape properly, I mean, don't distract people, don't disturb people. All these things are the responsibility that every single part has to be played on. Part from the brewers, part from the sellers, shop owners and part from the customers. So this, uh, this, this what do you say, uh, this acknowledgement or this mindset has to be there for every single body. So that's, the, that's when the vape scene or the vape industry will be looking more towards positivity rather than negativity here in Malaysia now. Now people think it's very negative because of why certain individuals tend to abuse vape outside. And a lot of people have seen that also. A lot of reports have been out there. So as a shop owner, as, as a pe person who is very responsible towards my customers, towards what I'm doing, my passion of this, I educate my customers a lot of times in terms of how to use it how not to use it, how to take care of your mod, how to service your mod, where to vape, where not to vape, and how to use your vapes. And please do not disturb any other people while vaping. Yeah. Okay, maintenance is very subjective. It all depends on how you use it. There's two ways of maintenance. For example, what you call this is a tank, right? You have another one which is called as a dripper. This is called as a dripper, right? So what happens is, what's so different with tank and dripper is, very straightforward. In tank, you have the liquids inside here, stocking up. So maybe a day or two. What you have in the dripper is every single time that you're dripping it, once you've dripped it, you just put it up inside. You just puff for maybe five to ten times. Immediately after five to ten times, you take it out again, and then you drip it again. So maintenance for this is very simple. Just the coil and the cotton. So you are using a liquid to drip on top of it. So any time, any single time that you feel a burning taste, a burning flavor coming out from your tank or your mod, immediately you'll be able to identify that maybe your cotton is not right or your coil is not right. So what you have to do now is just take out, change all this coil. What you see here is all the coils here. This is a four coil dripper. So you take it out, you change your coil depending on what kind of ohm you want. Ohm is something that you set in order for you to get the flavor or whether you want to get a vape production more. This is called as a dripper. So I'm just going to show you an example how a dripper works. So what you do is, take your juice, just drip it on top, all right? Once you have dripped it, you fire. This is how it works, the firing. Firing from the coil goes up the cotton, which has the flavor inside, and just burns it. You put it in, you start inhaling with this, start vaping with this. Once it's finished, five to 10 puffs, you take it out, you drip again and use it. So for changing this, or for servicing this, what happens is you change all your cottons here and also your coil according to your resistance or your ohm level that you want to have. Simple as that. Yeah, again, coming back to the question, it's a bit sub subjective. First, most important thing that you want to have is cleanliness. You need to have every single thing clean. You just don't want to take it, wipe it with your tissue and then put it back again. You have residues of your flavors inside. You have residues of your vape production inside here. So most of the time, what we do is we put it into a hot water. Put it into hot water, let it be there for less than a minute or so. Take it out, wipe it nicely with tissue, wipe it again with a cotton bug. Clean every single hose that you have here, every single compartment that you have here, which top, front, left, right, every single thing you clean to have a clean vape production coming out. You don't want to have any kind of residues inside here. So people come, tend to come and ask me, so how frequent do I need to service my uh, tank? How frequent do I need to service my dripper? It depends how you vape on it. If you are a very uh, hardcore vapor or consistent chain vapor, what happens is your coil every single time, maybe three, four days, you have to change. If you're a seasonal uh, vapor, maybe a week once, twice a week, don't go extensive more than a week or two. Do not do that. Even though you don't vape that much, but tend to change your coil every week to have a clean production of vape. Okay, where do I see the vape industry going further or vape going further? It's very hard to say because what currently what's happening now is we don't have regulation for vape. We don't have any kind of rules for vape as per cigarettes or traditional cigarettes that you talk about. So vape, for example, the liquids, you don't have tax for it. So maybe the government is in talks now to have tax for vape products or vape juices. And I would say personally, uh, personally, from my point of view, vape industry is the next thing, the thing after traditional cigarettes. Because a lot of people are aware about what are the consequences 
from traditional cigarettes will affect your health. So going back further, a lot of research has been done in vape products, vape juices, vape liquids, in how to make it much more healthier for the vapors in terms of clinical studies, in terms of uh, production of vape, the quality of vape products, the quality of the coils, the quality of the cottons that are being used. So every single dot, consistent research has been going in terms of technology base and also in terms of brewing and liquid and quality. So what I would think is, it's going further. You, uh, you are maybe looking at uh, the world is going towards a new source of vaping or smoking, you call it. Yeah. There are thousands of vape liquid available in the market. It has become a tight race for the liquid producers, also known as brewers, to cater to the taste of consumers. We come to Mr. Leon, a local brewer, to give us more insight about vape liquid. Hi everybody, this is Leon from Velvet Vapes. Um, okay, uh, to some of you who are not sure, I'm the brewer for Velvet Vapes Artisan and Liquids. Uh, we have two products called Pearberry and recently we launched our new liquid called uh, French Kiss. This is our liquid. And uh, let's have a chat. So uh, Velvet Vapes was founded in March 2015, uh, the same time when uh, it was just a few months before my son was born. And uh, I started brewing uh, for a main reason of a lifestyle change and that is how I got into brewing. The feedback that we have got along um, is basically, it's very, very similar to what you would get in a US liquid because all the ingredients that we use are basically from, from the States. And we have selected only the finest ingredients that we can get. We source them um, globally and also locally. It's the reason we are called artisan liquids because um, to be known as, as artisan liquids, you have to basically layer your, your liquid with different layers, so different uh, layers produce different flavour. So that is one of the reasons why uh, we started getting um, popular in the market in that sense. Um, and we, we have been um, selected by people to wait on our product. Um, I've got some really good buddies um, really doing some great stuff um, in, in, in the current market. and. Um, uh, usually, you would want to, if you go on, on liquids, you want to choose liquids that um, the, the, the founders of the liquid or the brewers of the liquid would basically take uh, a, lot of, a lot of attention to detail. It depends uh, on the scale of production. Uh, if, like for us, we are what you call as uh, micro-batch. Micro-batch meaning we produce nowhere more than 1,500 bottles in, uh, in a month or per batch. So in, in, having said that, you have scales from industrial right up to uh, microbrewery. Microbrewery is done usually within a premise in your, uh, in, in your, in your area where it is co controlled as much as you can. Uh, it's sterile as, as good as possible. We wear a head cap. We wear uh, gloves, you wear a surgical mask, uh, you wear glass, uh, you use glass objects to avoid contamination from going into the bottle. And preferably that area is dust free and uh, it has to be sterilized. We, a as a brand, we, we, we can't really disclose what, what we do, but um, usually you would generally, there's four, there's four main ingredients in your e-liquid. Uh, you've got the first ingredient you need is uh, propylene glycol, you need uh, vegetable glycerin, you need nicotine, and you need the different flavors that you want to use inside. So tentatively, you can say this, yes, you put them stage by stage, but um, it is a different method applied to a different process. Um, and for us in particular, we do it in different layers, on different days. So that is, that is how it's done. Now, for us, we do, it naturally. The natural way of doing things is basically adding stuff exactly like how wine is done. Um, every ingredient is put together by hand. So you top up everything by hand, all using um, glass beakers and stuff to transfer liquids from one thing to another. So um, what, is, what is good to know um, on e-liquids generally? Now, first of all, you want to ask yourself whether the liquid is safe, meaning 
um, the, the, the brand that you have chosen to, to take up on vape. Uh, whether the liquids that they use are meant for vaping, that's one. Secondly, whether the liquid, um, the, certain liquids are known to have diacetyl inside. Uh, let me touch a little bit on diacetyl. Diacetyl is um, a particular chemical that is released uh, in the process of popcorn making. Now, um, back in 1950s, people working at a factory uh, were known to have this lung infection uh, due to this process of popcorn making. And when, when an autopsy was done to one of the workers, they had discovered that the worker's lung was puffed up and is very spongy. Um, hence the term popcorn lung. That is due to the fact that diacetyl was released in the air and, it, it, and the workers were inhaling it. You know? uh, having said that, diacetyl is something compared to what it is in your regular analog cigarettes. Um, it is way, 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 way lesser. Known to have diacetyl stuff that has um, buttery flavors uh, or custard flavors or, or you know custard uh, butterscotch and uh, butter flavors are known to mainly have diacetyl. So if you are worried about diacetyl in liquid, um, what you can do is to um, try and read up about diacetyl in e-liquids in, in that sense because Certain fruit flavors naturally have diacetyl, which um, strawberries are known to have a little bit of diacetyl, but it's not. Those are natural products which you consume any day. Even if you eat a fruit, it's there, present. So that's not going to basically give you that, that effect. You know? Most, most, um, or if, they, if the producers of the liquid generally are are all about weep safe then you want to pick up that liquid you know um, the reason being because they care about what they're doing so you can you can find who the brewers are if you do a little bit of research you'll know who they are send them a message just ask them you know um, are your are your liquids safe you know I'm sure they will be able to to guide you and explain to you you know on the questions you have so otherwise, if you are a consumer and you want to pick up um, our product, generally, uh, Pearberry and French Kiss, uh, it is known to be as safe as possible because we use um, as much natural ingredients as we can. Malaysia, on the whole, the wave scene now is in a very grey zone. Uh, we are actually on the fence right now. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of friends uh, and a lot of people who have been vaping are going, starting to go back to smoking, and which is a sad thing. Um, with the recent, with the recent uh, raids done and stuff like that, um, the government has to do what they have to do to to ensure that you know things are safe. But having said all that, the industry per se, um, it is starting to grow again. Uh, a couple of months ago, it was it was really uh, really silent and uh, a lot of people uh, were afraid to even pick up their mods and go out and wait because uh, on fear that it would be confiscated, uh, they, would be, they, would be, uh, they would be jailed for it, you know? And, but right now, what I, what I personally see, I mean, why, why choose to, to smoke when you know there's a healthy option? At the end of the day, what we want is the nicotine deliverance. You know, so now you're able to get a nicotine deliverance without the tar and carbon monoxide and all the other 4,000 over chemicals produced in a cigarette. Why not go back and wait? The initial idea of vaping is to cater to smokers and help them to stop smoking. As of late, vaping has attracted the attention of young adults even those who are not smoking. This seems worrying for the older generation, who has been through the popular age of cigarettes before they found out about the long-term effects. Uh, it's actually a trick question. I don't like vape, but I do vape sometimes. Like when I, when I go out with my friends or something, I don't have my own device or something, so you cannot, I cannot say I vape. So yeah, sometimes, maybe like 
two or three times in a month, like that. I think I've been vaping for nearly a, more than a year. More than, Around, more than a year, yeah. Um, I've been vaping for the past two years, two and a half, two and a half years. I was not a smoker, but I was uh, addicted to shisha, which is hookah, they call it. Um, which is highly more effect compared to cigarette because uh, one puff is uh, similar to 100 cigarettes puff. I'm a non-smoker at all. Like I started with vape, so I'm not into cigarettes at all. So when I started, I was like, oh, actually I started with from shisha. Then I had the guts to try vape, but I like it. I like the vape more. Uh, I would say for about two years now. Uh, you have been dating for two years. That's right. So, what do you think about dating? How, why did you start dating? I guess it came once upon a time when I used to be a smoker before, and I used to mix around a few friends who were vaping before me, who even started before me. And I guess I was a little bit interested with what this new gadget they had in their hand, and I guess after a few puffs, I got hooked onto it, and ever since then, I've just not been, a been able to stop. Uh, when I switched to vaping, um, I can't go back to shisha because when I uh, pull shisha, it makes me to vomit. And uh, because vaping does liquid, e-liquid we call it, and its smell is very good compared to sweet, similar to sweet, and it doesn't have uh, other contents such as tobacco, uh, tar or what. Only contains nicotine and also you can choose whether you want nicotine or you don't want it. I like flavours more than like this nicotine and this icy cold feeling in your throat. So I tried vaping. Then I find vaping is like a lot of flavours. And if I, I can maintain like 40 ringgit a month, depending on what flavors I buy. So basically I start vaping because of the price and also the um, health benefits. You know, they say that yeah, vaping is much safer than cigarettes and shisha. Yeah. I feel like when a lot of people having the device and I'm like, uh, what this actually does and does it feel like taste good? So I just tasted it from my friend, so it's actually, it's actually good. Uh, I think it's okay if you do it not that regular because uh, I feel like if you do anything too much it's not good for you even if we eat a lot of food it's not good for us so uh, I think if you do it if you know your limit and stuff if you know if you're doing just for fun just for the hang of it it's then it's okay but if you're kind of like addicted to it oh then I think you gotta have some problem because wave is new now and we might know the bad causes later in two three years so I think yeah if it's if it's controlled sense of law yeah, yeah yeah if it's controlled I think then no problem definitely yes because uh, it will um, first thing whenever we smoke in the public or what cigarette most of the people doesn't like the smell even me I couldn't take it the smell because it makes me vomit and irritate and let's say we vape some people love the smell even though they don't smoke they don't vape uh, I would say vaping is a lot more safer like for example the second hand smoke or the second hand vape that comes out of the person's mouth is not or does not affect the other person around them secondly the only drug that is in that device is nicotine which causes you to be addicted so comparing vape to either shisha or cigarettes or any other material based smoke, I guess vape would be the safest. Vaping is like, uh, it's not good for health. Because it's vaping something like we are smoking also. Uh, Sometimes I feel irritated when they are, you know, vape and they throw just vape and the smoke one towards on you, then I really don't like all that. No, I'm not. I do not wait. Uh, uh. Occasionally, yes, but I stopped for Social the past three years. Um, kind of. Uh, I've heard good remarks about weeping and also some bad remarks, so I am not so sure which to believe unless um, if 
the government approves that vaping is safe, then maybe yes. But until then, maybe no. I will not vape. I would think it's similar to smoking. I, I mean, I would think it's similar to smoking. You would think it's similar to Yeah. The use of ingredients for vape flavours that can be commonly found naturally in food does not seem to ease the minds of those who are against vaping. There has been a few case studies for the short-term effects of vaping compared to cigarettes. Here is a short summary of a research done by Michael Mosley, a doctor who presents health cases in BBC's programme, Trust Me, I Am A Doctor. The first thing to understand is that smoking and vaping are very different. Smoking burns tobacco to release a large dose of addictive nicotine very quickly. But nicotine's not the major problem. Alongside it comes a cocktail of around 4,000 toxic chemicals, increasing the risk of cancer, heart disease and other serious illnesses. Electronic cigarettes heat up a cartridge of liquid to form a vapour, which can be inhaled instead of smoke. This vapour contains a nicotine hit, along with flavourings and other chemicals. We've taken samples of saliva, urine and breath from a range of vapours and a group of smokers. And we've done the same test to look at the risks of passive vaping. First, nicotine levels. We found the vapours get a similar dose of nicotine to smokers. Now for the test on the real nasties. Carbon monoxide, associated with heart disease, and acrolin, associated with cancer and lung problems. Here, the vapours had significantly lower levels, similar to those found in non-smokers. Electronic cigarettes have only been around for a short while. Is there some long-term risks we are not aware of? Uh, I think we can't exclude it altogether. I suppose some of the flavourings in e-cigarettes may turn up to be uh, a danger. There may be risks for some people with lung issues. I think they are unlikely. If there is a danger, it's likely to be a small fraction of a danger of smoking. What about the addictive qualities of nicotine? Because obviously they're still getting nicotine, they're not getting the other toxins. Are there dangers associated with that? There are. Nicotine is an addictive substance, and the proportion of people who use nicotine will become hooked. Uh, a lot of people drink coffee, right? You've got a coffee <laughs> cup in front of you. Indeed. I've got one. Yeah. A lot of people are hooked on coffee, and nicotine use would be roughly in the same category if there were no other toxic chemicals which accompany it. Do you think that e-cigarettes are a big change? I think they could be a revolutionary change. I think they have a potential to basically eradicate smoking-related disease and death on the population scale. So even with all the current research leaning towards vaping, a large part of society still does not accept it. It is true that it has a lower risk than smoking cigarettes, but there is still no evidence that it may pose a threat in the long run.